Uh, field day. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to um, Mike Danhart, and he's going to walk us through what all of us need to know for field day. Thanks. All right, well, yes, this is going to be just a real quick one to do on uh, where we're spitting currently and what we need uh, to happen to pull off a successful field day. Um, this slide here is uh, our guiding principles, which we've been tending towards this for the last couple of years. First and four months is to have fun. Um, we've gone from a couple iterations of doing four A's, and I think we tried a five A one year. We're just going to go try to keep it simplify, simplify, simplify. Uh, it makes it easier on the volunteers setting this stuff up. It makes it easier for um, effective communications, and it keeps it fun for everybody, for the participants as well as the folks who are doing all the volunteer work. Um, so we're going to go 3A this year. We're going to have a GOTA, which stands for Get on the Air. Uh, we're going to have a VHF, uh, UHF, and a satellite tent set up. Other guiding principles, of course, to be safe and be invited. We want to have everybody welcome that shows up at our field day site. Okay, well, uh, for folks who haven't been there, we hold it at Burke Lake Park. So this is a, a real gross, uh, zoomed out view. So Burke Lake, for you guys who aren't familiar, I suspect probably most folks are. So it's between, you know, you got 495, you got 95 and 66. So Burke Lake Park is sort of uh, bound by those, those big highways. Uh, zooming in a little bit here, this is a little bit closer, Burke Lake Park. Um, the thing you want to be aware of if you're coming to the park, this is 123, which has the entrances to Burke Lake. There are a couple of entrances because there's a golf center right here. Um, so this first entrance, if you're coming from the north, you do not want to go in there. That's the entrance to the golf course. Uh, the next one down is the entrance uh, to our, our setup. And there will be signs uh, set up that point you uh, to the field day event, the VWS. We'll have a big sign up. But it's a, it's a little bit of a road in, and then you immediately take a left, and you'll be on what's called Golf Course Road. Um, this is a, a shot of our actual field day setup that we've got planned. So you can see um, 123 is marked on the highway coming down. So it's coming down from the north, and you can't quite see the turn into the park. But as soon as you turn on, you take an immediate left, and that's called Golf Road. That road normally connects over to the golf course, but will be closed off for our event. There should be signs up. There should be a barrier up so people aren't trying to traverse through to the golf course and coming through our event. So along that road, we'll be parking. Um, so the, the big things I want to uh, point out on our, on our site, um, <clears throat> we'll have like a, a row of antennas along the top. The operating tents are going to be back behind these, these trees, so hopefully be shaded and a little cooler. A change from years past, and this is probably important to note, is we're going to move the mess tent, the big circus community mess tent, up right next to the road. So as visitors are coming in, they're parking, that tent will be the first thing they encounter, and we'll have some signs set up, some welcoming, some meet and greet folks sitting there, welcoming people to our site. <clears throat> if you're coming to visit, um, and parking, you can park along this road. I just ask that the immediate sites right in front of or near that big tent be kept clear for people who maybe need a little assistance getting in and out of their cars. We're going to have some people that are getting picked up and brought to the site. Um, I don't know if we have wheelchairs or not, but it'd be nice to keep that sort of a little bit reserved for, you know, call it handicap parking, if, if I might call it that. So that's our, our setup. And um, you can all this information. I'll show you how you can link to it and see it from the VWS website. But this is available for everybody to per peruse um, later when we've got when you're at home or have more time. Activities um, mainly centered around operating, right? So we have um, HF. We have three HF stations set up. So the three A for those who aren't familiar with the three stands for three HF stations. A for alternative power. So we're off the mains. We're using um, generators and or solar power or alternative power. Um, and you're allowed with a 3A operation to have additional VHF, UHF station. So we'll have, a, we'll have that set up. Um, that includes the uh, satellite communications. Hopefully we'll be able to make some contacts with a euphemically called birds. Um, the GOTA tent, which is the get on the air. 
So, I mean, how many people here, have, this will be the first time the field day. Do we have any brand new folks? So this would be a great place um, to come and operate. Everybody's welcome to operate any of these stations. Um, the, and I'll show you how you can sign up or the day of, you can check to see if they're available, but you're welcome to come into the HF operating stations, um, the HF, U, VHF uh, stations. Um, the only thing we ask on that is if, if you're coming in to operate on any of those stations, you have to be careful about uh, fiddling with the knobs. <laughs> you, you, you're happy to, to turn the volume up and down, uh, spin the big dial to change frequencies, but you want to be careful about doing things like changing bands, changing modes, uh, changing RF gains, stuff like that. Um, there's, there's a lot that goes into these stations that are set up and the band captains um, know how to operate the station properly. Like as an example, there are band pass filters set up. So if you change bands, a um, couple things could happen. If you transmit into a bandpass filter on the wrong band, you might damage the bandpass filter. Um, even if you did do that, you might cause interference with other stations in the field. So we just ask that you respect uh, the notes that are around the station as far as operating the radios. And if you have any questions, the band captains uh, should be there to, to assist you. And uh, the final thing, which is not to be ignored, is food and socializing. I mean, that's a big, this, this is one of the big events for our club every year. It's, um, I, I hazard to say, probably the biggest event as far as socializing. And when you see the food that's going to be laid out, as always, it's, um, it's something quite spectacular. And as it's been well known, uh, our motto here is calories per QSO. And uh, once again, I don't think we're going to be let down. So this is just a quick, a quick overview of, of what's currently planned. So if you're coming out Friday to help us set up, and I'm going to encourage uh, here in a minute that we really need a lot of help on, on Friday for setting up. And um, we'll be starting early, but there'll be pizza starting around 4 or 5 o'clock. So um, if you come out, you grab some pizza, um, get jazzed up a little more energy. We're going to have the big circus tent showing up um, sometime around that same time, four to five. So we're going to need a lot of hands. That tent is huge. It's actually like two tents. There's a lot of poles, a lot of stakes to be driven. Um, it's kind of, it really is like putting up a circus tent. So you get like two or three people on each pole and you know, pulling ropes, taunt. It's, it's actually quite a lot of fun. And then Saturday, we'll have lunch and dinner. And um, just briefly, you can look at those menus. I mean, it, it's, it'll make you drool. Sunday, we'll have uh, Ron's again doing our, our special um, breakfast there, bacon sausage, scrambled eggs, eggs to order. Um, it, even if you're not going to eat, it's fun to watch them flip and cook. And then uh, on takedown, again, a lot of activities going to be going on. And we'll have some uh, Friday, Friday lunch for fried chicken. And these are, this is just a... A small shot. I couldn't fit them all on the screen of all the sides, the salads, the desserts, and everything else. So, trust me, calories cucusa will live up to it. Okay, how does all this happen? Well, <clears throat> we got equipment. We got to get to and from our lockup in Chantilly. Equipment set up. So we got station tents to set up, antennas to go up, um, the big circus social tent, tables and chairs. We have to go around, and make sure everything is set up safely means uh, marking guidelines, uh, making sure there's no tripping hazards. We've got fire extinguishers set out. You know, we definitely want to be uh, super safe. we got the food prep, cutting, serving, cleaning, washing. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. And a lot of this has already been taken care of. A lot of the planning, it's been going on now for two months. And, um, you know, there's a, at least a, a good dozen, two dozen folks that are there every single uh, day of the week, I'm working to make this happen. But having said that, we still need you. There's still a lot of stuff that needs that needs to be done. Not so much need at this point, but um, a lot of assistance that would really lighten the load for everybody that's that's going to be there to help set up. So, what do we need you guys to do? Well, to start out with, um, if you look on our VWS website. This is every, for your start off point, the easiest place to get any information. If you go to the VWS website under field day, we've got a main menu up here, and there's the field day, field day notes. Okay, and this page is, is kept up to date with pretty much everything related to our field day. So you can see 
I, I failed to mention when it is. It's like June 21st, so it's coming up really quick now, right? So we're down to the, the final stretch of planning. But it's fr Friday starting like at 1030. We're going to have folks meeting out in Chantilly to start loading stuff up in the trucks. We're going to start raising, getting antennas set up, tents set up. It's going to go all day, probably until pretty much close to sunset. And then uh, starting Saturday morning again, we'll do the final installation of the antennas, the generators, grounding, um, testing the radios. And if it's been like years past, it's like right up to the, the kickoff time. We're still getting set up and, and getting going. And that starts at, uh, what, 2 p.m., I think, is the kickoff time. And then, uh, and then it's nonstop operating until... Uh, Sunday when it concludes at 2 and then everything comes down again. So on this page, what, what was I going on this? <laughs> uh, press releases. So on the same page here, there are flyers that you can, you can download and uh, stick up in your local pizza joints, the coffee shops you visit, the libraries. You know, we should get these hung up to, to get as many people invited that we can. Um, there's a press release, which is from the main VWS website under field day. There's a press, press release. Now, these have already been sent out. Um, I, I send them out to all our, st our state representatives, to the Vienna uh, mayor, and invited a whole bunch of people. So that's kind of what this press release. Also, TV stations, newspapers. So we've tried to get the word out to all the, uh, the local media and hopefully get some folks to come out and cover us. And it's had, in the past, we have gotten some, some pretty good coverage. So hopefully, again, that'll happen. Uh, I showed the flyer. And then social media. If you guys are doing social media stuff, I don't know if Discord. That's probably not social media. I don't know. But um, any social media, if you're on Facebook, you got friends, uh, Twitters, or Xs, or whatever, um, if you could promote the, uh, the event, that would be a great help to us. So how do you uh, do you volunteer? So again, on the on the website under field day, field day notes, you'll see down here there's a, a volunteer sign up roster, which brings up our spreadsheet, and then along the bottom there's all these teams that uh, could use your help. Like, for instance, here on the uh, station help, there's this GOTA tent. We, we've got some people in here, but the GOTA could use somebody else um, as a mentor. Well, not this, this one isn't for a mentor. This is for setting up, setting up the, uh, the, the tent and all the GOTA equipment. So anyway, you could, you could cruise through that, that spreadsheet and see what we need. I'm going to highlight just a couple of specific needs that are still out there. Most of these slots we've got, you know, your, your fellow members have stepped up, and a lot of those are filled. But there are some things that we're still looking for. Um, I will go out of order on this a little bit. A Sherpa. What's a Sherpa? A Sherpa is somebody that basically with a strong back and, a, and uh, not thinking too much. <laughs> we just need you to come out to, to the Chantilly lock up at 10 30 the address is on that spreadsheet or you can email me and i'll get you the information but starting around 10 30 out in chantilly we need folks just to kind of move the stuff out of the lockup, the storage unit and load it into the vehicles we've got lined up because um, otherwise it's going to be a lot of work for a few people so um, i know we need at least two more folks um, three or four more the more the merrier so that that's a big need uh, go to me go to mem mentors so get on the air uh, tent and a mentor is somebody who's basically sitting there as a control operator for the station so when we have visitors come in new folks have never been on hf this is an hf station um, we have people who are not licensed we have uh, kids come in um, maybe we might have the vienna i know vienna mayor came in one time and everybody who's run uh, this station being mentors have come away like just really glad they did it. It's a lot of fun. Um, you see a lot of smiling folks. You might hook some new ham radio operators. So I, th I think it's a lot of fun, but there's still openings on that. Uh, Bob uh, K2TV is running it, but he's got some family obligations. So he's going to be in and out, and his schedule's a little unknown at this time. So he's asking uh, to really have some, uh, some people in the backfield to help him with this. Another big thing we need is meet and greet. 
Um, and these folks will just sit. I ask that they sign up maybe for like hour shifts. It's in the big tent. So as, as people come in, the, the first place they're going to walk through is the meet and greet. You know, just, you know, hello, welcome to Vienna Wireless. And we'll have some paperwork that you can hand out, a sign-in sheet so people can sign in. We'd like to capture the names um, and account specifically of the people who are attending, particularly youth, because all those things help us in our bonus points um, when, we, when we finally submit our, our log to get a score block. And then the last thing that's not insignificant, and, and the, uh, the Cook folks have asked for this um, every year, and it really helps out a lot, ice blocks. So if you're planning on coming out uh, Saturday, if you could uh, ahead of time take like one gallon jug milk, milk jugs or half gallon milk jugs, paper, plastic, it doesn't matter, but cut them in half, fill them with water and freeze them or fill them with halfway full of water, freeze them and then cut them, in, cut them in half, it doesn't matter. But the idea is that you have half of a milk jug full of frozen, ice, uh, frozen water, ice. So when you bring it to field day, they can knock the ice out. It's not trapped in the container and put it in the cooler. And then you can take the plastic home with you and refill it and bring back ice the next day. Um, it's, it's the most efficient way to transport the ice and get it not so you have frozen jugs of water that you can't get out. So half block or, or half jugs of frozen water would really be great. And it saves a lot of money. It's surprising how much that ice um, adds up. Okay, I talked about the volunteer volunteer sign-up sheet. Well, how about, can I just show up and help? Well, heck yeah. And actually, we depend on that. In years past, it's, it kind of seems like the volunteer sign-up sheet, and I'm not advocating this, <laughs> the volunteer sign-up sheet is kind of sparse, but day of, like Friday afternoon, Sunday, after it's done, um, we have lots of hands on deck, and it's been great. And I hope that happens again. It really, really helps out and I can't emphasize how much fun it is. It truly is. Okay, what else can you do? You can just come out to observe if you don't want to operate or operate. We have got a, a CW tent set up, voice, digital. So um, you can pick your poison, you know, whatever you, whatever you want to operate or just come in, sit down. You can um, observe, learn. Um, you can assist the operator with doing logging. Um, Rick's going to go over after this a, a lot about um, the N1MM logger we use, um, give you some of the details on, on how to work that. It's, it's uh, the most common used logging software, and this gives you a really good opportunity to sit there and see, learn on how to operate, uh, uh, operate that software. So it's a really good, good chance to pick up your skills on that. Um, there is a sign-up sheet. So if, if you want to, um, if you know you, you want to come at midnight, <laughs> 11, whatever, whatever time slot you want to operate, again, if you go to the website, on all things field day here, from field day, field notes, there is a sign up operating time slots. So there's a spreadsheet here that has each of the, the tents, the phone, the digital, and the CW, and then the GOTA for helping out mentoring on the GOTA. And there's two, two tabs down here, one for Saturday and one, from, one for Sunday. So this is our current setup right now. So you can see, you know, operating on Saturday from 4 to 4.30, nobody signed up. Why? Probably because dinner's getting served, <laughs> be my guess. But anyway, so you can see here, so you can sign up ahead of time, so you're, you kind of know you're going to have a slot available in one of the tents. But if you just show up, um, so this, this sign-up sheet will close. Sean, do you know when it's closing? See here, he's not here. It'll shut down at some point, and then from that point on, there'll be a paper uh, listing uh, in the, probably in the, uh, in the main social tent. So you can look and see you know, what slots are open for operating. But again, you can go to any of the tents, hop in there, and, and take a look and see what's going on. And so that's what I'm saying. Can I just show up and operate? Yes, just look at the online sign-up sheet. These little uh, badges here that you see, those are going to indicate, so that they'll be um, hanging in the main tent, in the, in the main uh, circus tent, and then each one of the stations will grab whatever 
bands that their mode and frequency they're going to be working on, what band they're going to be operating on. So, for instance, if the uh, CW tent is going to be working 15 meters, they'll take that 15 meter tag off the main board hanging on their tent. So you can look at the tent and see what's going on, what band, what mode. Um, one of the main reasons for having this is to avoid um, interstation or uh, interference. So you, you don't want to have two people all of a sudden trying to work on 15 meter CW and digital at the same time. It would uh, wreak havoc with RFI interference. Okay, and the last thing is just to just to come out and visit. Even if you're not going to operate, you know, um, you just, you're not going to eat, which I'd be silly. <laughs> but just come out and uh, and enjoy our club. Um, the weather forecast, um, I think, is going to be brilliant. It's going to be clear and cool. <laughs> 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 Which brings up a point. If you're coming out, I mean, dress appropriately, right? White, you know, light clothes, um, a nice sun hat, um, suntan lotion, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you're coming out to help and you're volunteering, please bring bug spray, uh, you know, poison ivory stuff. I found when I was doing it, and I was in the thick of the poison ivy, just having a bag with uh, soapy water and a washcloth. So you, you come out or you, you think you've rubbed across it, you know, you just take the soapy rag out and just, you know, scrub your legs down or something. Um, it makes a big difference. Anyway, got sidetracked. But bring a friend, bring a neighbor, um, bring youth. I mean, uh, I know a lot of folks are scout masters or work with the scouts. If you can drag some of those folks out, that would be fantastic. We get bonus points for it. But, you know, beyond that, it's just fun to watch these kids grab a mic and talk to somebody across the, across the country. So, yeah, please volunteer. If there are VPs that come out, I don't know if there will be, but if somebody's asking, you know, what can we expect for lunch or breakfast, please res respond so they can, you know, plan appropriately and not have a bunch of wasted food out there. Um, that's it other than one more pitch. So this is finishing up uh, soon, but the weekend after that, we've got the American Fun Run, which is another thing that we support um, out of the... Um, the uh, VFW in Vienna. So stand by. As soon as this starts wrapping up, probably before, I'm going to start asking for volunteers. That's Saturday the 29th. And we'll need, um, it's another fun event. It's a run. We station folks around, two meter, probably simplex, and, uh, and just support the race. So it's something we do for the community. And uh, it, it's a lot of fun, and it's, it's, uh, it's a good outreach.